Hello everyone, and it's a pleasure there with you here on a Saturday to talk to you about my pet mantises. I am going to upgrade their little uh, habitats for the Easter. They are now L sevens and full ground. This right here is my piglet who has a terrarium, which I have just upgraded. I'll show that to you right over here. And then we'll talk about how I made this and I will show you on the next one. So you see what I've done is I've actually put some spider plants in here. This is uh, Piglet and these are uh, Piglet stats. Piglet is not quite a year old yet, but getting up there, this is a ghost mantis. And so what I've done is I have made a little, um, a little basket to put some spider plants in in a bit of foam, which is going to be an upgrade from what they've previously been in. This over here is Leaflet, who has not yet had an upgrade. You can see that I'm using the cotton uh, in order to hold the moisture in the terrarium. And I made little Christmas tree, uh, little Christmas trees for them to climb on. And they also have a candy wrapper as an something that they can climb on to get up to the top and also help them to get to their prey. But first of all, they're getting a little bit old and second of all, it's not particularly seasonable anymore. So I thought that I would give them an upgrade today. You don't have to celebrate Easter in order to enjoy this, um, but I thought that this would be an appropriate thing to do for these little guys. All right, so let us get started. Enjoying the new terrarium. So, what you're going to want to do is gather together the materials you're going to need in order to put together your little terrarium. So, what I've got here is a bottle cap. This is just off of, um, just off of a soda bottle actually it was from seltzer water so i know that there shouldn't be any contaminants on this uh, of course the mantises do not like any kinds of contaminants chemicals soaps they do not like any of those uh, the next thing that i have done is i have some clippings from my spider plants they do grow the babies and what i like to do is to set them in a little cup of water so that they start growing roots but even if they haven't really done a whole lot of root growing this will actually be a great way to root your spider plants to grow them out and i do actually then put them in my fish tank to help with the filtration system in there but even if you don't do that you could certainly after they grow up somewhat you could transfer them to pots and grow them around your house whatever you like to do with them the other material that is um, these, these are some foam, some just little foam uh, covers that I put on my filtration system. This is actually from my shrimp tank. That's why I get these, they, this one came in a pack of uh, eight, I think originally. It says BCP, eight pieces, free filler foam sponge roll for aquarium fish tank. I bought it for a couple of dollars off of either Amazon or eBay. And I just have another pack over here that's uh, already open so I can show you what um, they look like. So when you take them out, they look like this. Now you just put your filtration system in there um, to uh, prevent it from sucking up the shrimps or you could also put it over your air bubble to make a sponge filter which is what I get but you see that they have a hole down the middle there to put the um, to put over your filter or whatever you want to do with that I also use these on my filtration in my baby guppy tank um, so I do have a bunch of these laying around and it costs you just you know a couple dollars to buy those on the internet. So what I do is actually, I just cut these down. You can see this one is already quite a bit shorter than the original one because I've just been working on that already. But you can just take this and if you just snip this right here, about a half an inch or so, you can even just eyeball that. Um, you can cut it out and you will end up with a 
donut shaped little uh, sponge ring, which is really quite perfect. Now, suppose you don't have these, or maybe you don't want to buy these. I really think that just about any sponge would do. Um, you do want to make sure that you don't reuse a sponge that you've been using with cleaners. That's not a good idea because you really want to make sure that these sponges don't have any contaminants in there at all. It's not good for the plants, but it's, if you have any cleaners, you could kill your mantises, so you don't want to do that. Um, but you could just take any sort of uh, household sponge that you buy at you know, your local store. Don't get the ones that are treated with all the antibacterial stuff, but if you can find just like the real cheap ones and you could cut it into a strip and you could then um, roll it like this. And I will also be securing them with these elastics because as you can see, it is a little bit oversized to fit inside of this cap, but if I do scrunch it up a bit, it will go in just fine. So here's what I have done. I have selected some baby spider plants. You can see that they do have a bit of a root system on the bottom, which is great. Um, but like I said, actually, it will work just fine. Even if they haven't grown out too much for roots, you just want to make sure they have a couple of leaves. The other thing that I want to keep in mind is I want to make sure that it's high enough to reach to the top of the jar that I'll be using. So. One of the things that I am considering is these ones are a little shorter than the model one that I showed you before. And of course, the reason why we put these in or you put things inside your enclosure for your mantis is so that they can climb up to the top. It's very important when they're molting. Mine are full grown, so they won't be molting anymore, which I can tell because they both have wings. Um, however, it's possible that you may um, have molting mantises and it's very important. And still it's also important for them to be able to get up to the top to be able to reach their prey when it is up there. And they also just really like to climb around in the enclosure. Now my girls actually are not too bad at climbing on the glass, but still I think it's a good idea for them to have it. So if I just measure these against it, it's probably high enough for them to be able to reach the top, but I may just put a supplement in there anyway. So I just have actually have some dried out leftovers from uh, some plants I was growing. So I know that this doesn't have any herbicides or anything on it. Um, we have bird seed that fell into our tomato plants and uh, we are pulling out the pots to start our potting project. And so I just uh, grabbed this because I knew that that uh, dried out sample could work. You can also use something from around your yard, but you do just want to make sure that it's clean. Um, some people like to clean them by baking them to disinfect them. This one I'm not so worried about because I know where it is then and I also know that it has been um, in my house for the last, mm, since last summer. So it probably is um, pretty, pretty safe to use. You don't really want to be picking up things from your yard, especially if they're damp, because you could be bringing in mold or other uh, contaminants that would just be better to avoid. Might not be a big problem, but we'd just rather avoid it. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just take these little spider plants and I am just going to, let me just show you here, I'm going to just sit them in the hole of this sponge that I have chosen. Now, if you're going to just use a regular house sponge, like uh, it doesn't have a hole down the center and you're cutting that, what you can do is you can simply just wrap it around. And then I'm just going to pinch it like that to make it a little bit smaller. So I'll be able to fit it inside. And let's test that. Ooh. There we go. So now that is tucked nicely into my bottle cap. But as you can see, it's sort of splaying out on the top and I'm a little concerned that it may pop out when I'm not looking. So I'm going to simply just wrap it with an elastic band. So let me go ahead and do that. One second, need two hands for that. All right, I have tucked those in and got a nice secure root bundle down in the bottom so you can see that that's now in the plant and I have gotten the elastic around to take a bit of doing to get that all tucked in the way I want it, but I think that's pretty good. And now I can simply just pop that right into the little bottle cap and we are ready to go. So next we're gonna do is we are going to clean up leaflet's tank. 
leaflets uh, container here because it is a little bit dirty. So, leaflet, do you want to come out? Leaflet? Come out, leaflet. Say hello. All right, next up, we will go out to the kitchen and clean this out. These are the old decorations. This is a Christmas tree I made from gluing toothpicks with blue glue and PC6 and a little cotton round, which has been great for holding moisture over the winter. Now, let's go out to the kitchen and let's wash the enclosure. All right, here we are in the kitchen. Leaflets come along to just make sure I'm doing a good job and for quality control purposes. All right, come on over here. Now I'll start off by cleaning it just with regular tap water. I am very fortunate to also have an RODI in my house, but if you do not happen to have the capabilities to have an RODI in your house, um, you can get some water is dechlorinated in a number of ways. You can simply just save a jug. So for example, we use our iced tea jugs, which are nice and big and are the gallon size. And you can just put your tap water in there and just leave it to sit. So for example, after you do your work, you just fill up your jug and then leave it to sit. And as long as it has been a good, you know, probably a minimum of three days, I usually leave it for a week or so, um, you will have some good dechlorinated water that you can use for, um, for any of your purposes for taking care of your mantises. Now we also have a lot of fish tank water around because as I mentioned, we do have a number of tanks in this house. So that water of course is also dechlorinated and that's actually what I use to water all of my plants and also what I put in my spritzer when I do my daily misting of the mantises. So that, that way I know that the water is nice and clean and that there will be no contaminants. And also the plants love it because there are some nitrates from the fish tanks in there, which the plants really like. All right, so now I've just used this uh, spoon to help me reach down into the bottom and to clean out all of the frass that has accumulated down in the bottom over our past week. I do usually clean out the enclosures about once a week or so um, and I do go in there on a daily basis when I'm feeding so either every day or every other day depending on the size of their meal and uh, you know just pick out what I can reach and, and the, the bad stuff but if you do that on a weekly basis I just like to do a nice deep clean for that so here you see what I've done is I have washed that out First with the tap water and I'm just using this candle of a spoon to reach down to the bottom but because now I've introduced some chlorine in here you see that I'm doing a rinse with my RODI water which you can do like I said with water your dechlorinated water which you can get by simply just storing it up um, in a jug or so on um, and let that stand up and that would be what you would use to rinse instead. All right so there we rinse that out I'm also just going to rinse off my little topper here. So this is the one that I put already bought in here with elastic bands. I actually really like to use the hair elastics because they're nice and colorful and they're also a little bit stronger. And I do have a mild latex allergy, so that way I'm not in direct contact with the, uh, the rubbery part of the rubber bands. So it works pretty well. All right, so I rinse this off. This is just my cotton fabric that goes on the top. And we have now cleaned this up. All right, little leaflet. Yeah. Do you approve? Do you approve leaflet? <laughs> leaflet uh, found a droplet of water. All right, great. We'll move back over to the work desk and move on to the next step. All right, here we are back at the work desk. I have a little leaflet looking on at the nice clean house. And we see that uh, Twiglet is speaking in to make sure that I'm doing a good job to give her sister an equally nice terrarium as she has. So now I'm just gonna take this little 
plant. And I do have a pair of just some cheeky tweezers here that helps me just to reach in. And I'm just gonna take that and put that down in the bottom. The one thing that I don't love about this setup is that this can slide around. So if it were to fall on the mantises, I could see that it could be a bit of a hazard for them, but generally speaking, they're bigger and this really shouldn't be moving around too much. But I think something that I might do is actually just put a bit of gravel down in the bottom. Now that's gonna make it harder to clean, but it will secure these in place. So what I can use for gravel actually is some fish tank gravel. I actually have some of that on hand. So let me actually just go and get a bit of fish tank gravel. Let's just pause that for a moment. So I'll be right back. All right, I've actually decided on using some marbles instead because it's just what I happen to have on hand available to work with. So these are some marbles I picked up at my local dollar store and I have just rinsed them off also in the RDI water and I am going to put them in the tank. Let's see if that is okay. So I also use these in the bottom of my fish tanks. They're really terrific for just um, being in the bottom. I think they look really nice. They're not that heavy. I mean, if you have tiny mantises, you probably really don't want to use these because they might be a little big for them. But my guys are big enough. And also, I'm going to pack them so that they're not going to be that movable. So I'm reasonably confident that there wouldn't be any uh, down here. So I'm just setting these down in the bottom. Don't run away. And you just put these in. Hey, hey, hey. And using my tweezers, I can just adjust this a little bit. So you see the goal is to just fix that so that it will be right in the middle. And there we have it. So you see that now that acts nicely so that there's not a whole lot of wiggle room down there so that these aren't going to be moving around too much. And I think I might have space for one more model on the side. Yeah, just put that in. All right, yeah, that packs nice and tightly so there's really no wiggle room down there um, at all. You can see from the bottom also how that packs really nicely so that keeps the plant in the center and uh, makes this really nice. Now, just looking at this, the leaf comes up to about here on the top. Now I'm pretty sure my girl can reach the top, but just in case, like I said, I had this little dry weed thing sitting around. Now that's a little bit taller. I'm just going to trim that to size a bit so that I can also just place something that's a little bit taller in there. So I will be absolutely certain she'll be able to reach up to the top. So, and then we should be able to just stick this in. This probably isn't going to last forever because, of course, this one is not live and I'm just going to be sitting in some water here. So, it may not last forever, but I think it would be something reasonable. There we go. So, let's see what is oh, now it's messing up. Missing up what I have down here. I think it will be reasonable. Let me try putting it on the side, maybe. Here we go. So now I have this, and this is definitely reaching up to the top. So that um, I know for certain that she will be able to get up to the top of that. And when I put the cover on, that will just bend over a little bit. So there we have it. So my little friend. Sometimes she likes me better. Um, let's put her in and see how she likes it. He always wants to be in a place where she's not, if she's in. 
wants to be held and she's out she wants to stay out can we try to do it can you go come on they also do tend to like to step up and not down so it's always a challenge I guess I'm going to go back in. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, make sure the little leggings are clear of the top. And just place this right on. It looks like she likes it. Um, this is her elastic that I put on the top. Nice and colorful. All right, and there we have it, the refreshed terrarium, just in time for Easter. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you find this helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.